Good evening. Good evening. Well, welcome to God's house as we're gathered together for our Lenten Vespers. We're going to continue with our theme, uh, The Great Cloud of Witnesses, looking at these characters from the Old Testament and their impact as they follow God and walk with Him. And tonight, we're going to use Abraham and look at his test that God gave him and compare that to the test that Jesus was given as well. And with that, I invite you to stand for our call to worship. Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we have come together to devote ourselves to the worship of God, the Word of God, prayers to God, and fellowship with one another. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us this night confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. I ask for your forgiveness for the sake of and in the name of Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are restored by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest now in peace and rise in mourning to serve him. Amen. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men. You may be seated. As we share the passion reading of our Lord Jesus, and this evening we're going to be focusing in with Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. Now when they had sung a hymn, Jesus went out, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And then Jesus said to them, You will all be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Though all be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny, deny me three times. But Peter said more vehemently, vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others said likewise. Then I went over the brook of Kedron and came to a place which was called Gethsemane. There was a garden there. Jesus went into it with his disciples. Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place where Jesus often met there with his disciples. And when he was at that place, he said to them, Sit down here, while I go ahead and pray. 
pray that you will not enter into temptation. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be full of sorrow and turmoil. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Wait here and watch with me. He went on a little while from them, about a stone's throw. He fell on his face and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. An angel appeared to Jesus from heaven, strengthening him. And he prayed, saying, O my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. In agony, he prayed more earnestly, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And this sweat fell on the ground like great drops of blood. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus went away again for the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, your will be done. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. He left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Look, he is at hand who betrays me. And even while he was saying this, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a detachment and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They came in the place with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing that all things that would come upon him, went out to them and said, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, had taken his stand with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I told you that I am he. If I am the one you seek, then let these go away. This was to fill the word, fulfill the word he had spoken. Of those who gave me, I have lost none. Now he that was betraying Jesus had given them a sign, saying, The one whom I shall kiss, that is he, seize him and be sure to take him away securely. He went straight up to Jesus and said, Hail, Master. And Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? They came and then laid their hands on Jesus and took him. When those who were about him saw what would happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus answered and he said, Let it be. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. All that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Do you imagine that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he will presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? Thus it must be. The cup which my Father has given me, shall I not drink of it? Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders who had come out against him, Have you come out against the thief with swords and clubs to take me? When I was with you day after day teaching in the temple, you did not lay your hands on me. But this is your hour and the hour of temptation, the hour of the power of darkness. All this has happened that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Yet there was a certain young man who followed along. He had only a linen cloth about his naked body. They laid hold on him, but he slipped out of the linen 
and he fled away naked. Then the detachment and its captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was the one who gave counsel to the Jews that it was good that one man should die for the people. And this is the passion of our Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Jesus. Amen. And, and God's word today that we want to use for our reflection is from Genesis chapter 22. Now sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, hear my, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only beloved son, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. He himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire, the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place that God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there. He arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. 
Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord calls to Abraham from heaven a second time. And he said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. When your descendants will take possession of the cities of their their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have listened to my voice. This is the word of our Lord. Take your son, your only beloved son Isaac, and go to the region of Mount Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. That's how God instructed Abram that day. Can you imagine that night for Abraham as he made plans to leave the next morning? Take your only son, your beloved son, Isaac, and sacrifice him as a burnt offering to the Lord. I mean, why? Well, verse 1 tells us why. It said, after these things, God tested Abraham. Why? God wanted to test Abraham. Abraham was tested, as other people have been tested. See, when God tests, it's never to destroy a person, but to develop them, to build them, to build character in them, to build faith in them. Not to destroy, but to build. God tested Abraham. And then it said, after all these things, God tested him. I mean, just think about all those things in Abraham's walk. He was called from his home to leave a new place. Remember this story? Abraham lives in Ur of the Chaldeans. Today, we would call it Basra, Iraq. God says, leave your place, leave your people, and go to the place I'm going to show you. And they migrate as refugees to the top of Syria, and they camp there. And then God says, I'm going to show you a new land. Go there and live. And so they pick up their tents and they go down to Palestine. They have no people there. They have no land there. They have no claim there. But he goes. And, and, and in those journeys, they make two journeys, refugee journeys and famines down to Egypt, where he, he gives in and treats his wife like a sister so that he'll be safe. When, when God made promises, Abraham, you and Sarah are going to have descendants as numerous as the stars and the beaches of the sand. The only thing is they had no children. 100 years old, 90 years old, no children. They ain't going to make any more children now, it seems. And, and so they try to take things in their own hands, and it's not working. And, and all those stories, many of them failures on Abraham's part, where he didn't trust, where he didn't, wasn't patient, where he didn't have faith. But God was always faithful. He gives them the son named Isaac. Laughter. In their old age, he gives them the son. But now, 12 years later, this son, his only beloved son, becomes the one whom God says will be the test. Sacrifice your own son. It's hard to imagine. This is, this is a piece of art that I found that reflects on it. We'll make it work here in a second. I don't know how well you can see it, but it struck me is the image on I in Abraham's face. The artist tried to render the pain, the agony, as he drew the knife with his son bound on the altar. There is the wood, there is the knife, there is the fire, there is the altar, and the son asked him, Father, I see, we've got the wood, we've got the fire, we've got the knife. We've worshiped this way before. Where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide the lamb for the sacrifice, Abraham says, trusting, going to the top of the mountain, and yet having to bind his son the whole time. 
realizing that he will do what God has asked him to do, but the Lord will provide. I mean, look at the anguish on Abraham's face. The test, it's not easy. Most tests that you're going to face in life aren't going to be easy. That's why they're tests. But again, the tests that come from God, they're never to destroy. They're only to build and develop and strengthen. The word test, it, it's very similar to the Old Testament word that's used to refine, to refine metals. They're, they're synonymous words. To, to refine the metals of gold or copper or iron, right? You throw it into intense heat. You melt it so that the good stuff rises to the top and the chafe, the bad stuff, settles to the bottom. It's a refining process to bring the best out of that metal. That's what the test is. Undergoing intense heat to build and to strengthen, to purify. And the purpose of the test for Abraham, God told us, it's in verse 12. Do not lay a hand on the boy, the Lord said. Do not do anything to him, now that I know you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. The purpose of the test, God was testing Abraham, do you love the gift? more than the giver. That was the test. Abraham, do you love this gift, this son, more than me, the giver? The purpose of the test was to show Abraham loved God, the giver, more than the gift. And Abraham simply trusts God will provide. Do not lay a hand on him, the angel said. The ram in the thicket was there, and it replaces Isaac on the altar as the substitute. Why? Because God provides. Now, the whole story, all of it, is a foreshadowing. It's a foreshadowing of another son of sacrifice, Jesus. Right? And he's called God's only beloved son, sent to be a sacrifice for sin, and Jesus knew that. Jesus, above all, knew it. He knew what he was facing when he came into this world. And so on that night of betrayal, that night of the Last Supper, when the meal was over, they head to the garden. They've gone to the garden before. But in the garden, Jesus is going to face his own test. That was his prayer. He doesn't want to. Father, let this cup pass from me. God, if it's possible, don't make me drink this cup. Jesus asked the disciples, Peter, James, and John, and the others, to watch with him, to pray with him, to face their own test. We heard how that happened, what result that came, right? He comes back to them time and time again, and their eyes are heavy, and they're falling asleep. He says, you're going to be tempted, you're going to be tested. The Spirit's willing, but the body's weak. And Jesus faces his own test that day, too. Let the cup pass from me. It's an image of the Old Testament, this cup of wrath that God has for sin in the world. It's from the prophetic words of Jeremiah that God would take all his anger and his wrath for people's sins and make people drink it. But instead, Jesus knows that's going to happen to him. That that's what it means for him to go to the cross. He's going to drink that anger, that punishment, that wrath. And he doesn't want to. Father, let this cup pass from me. And as Jesus faces his test, here's the difference. He's not facing the test to show that he loves God the giver more than the gift, because here's the truth. Jesus is the giving God. Jesus is both the giving God and he's the gift. So Jesus' testing isn't to purify him. No, Jesus was being tested not for his love for God, but he was focusing on his love for us. Would Jesus be willing to die for those he knows will betray him and deny him and flee from him? Will he, will he be willing to die in love for those who are guilty and unlovable, 
who have failed over and over and over. That's the task for Jesus. And we know the answer. Not my will, but God, your will be done. Jesus is willing. He's willing to show God's love for us. He's willing to die for even us. He's willing to drink that cup. So we don't have to. In Genesis 22, the Lord provided a substitute ram for Isaac. Abraham did not end up needing to sacrifice his only son on that altar. But with Jesus, there would be no substitute. No substitute ram in the thicket to be sacrificed. And to that, we can simply say thanks be to God. Because Jesus was provided himself. And he was willing to go and to do it. Not by my will, Jesus said, but let yours be done, Father. So here's a truth that you can take home tonight. The Lord still provides. Even if and when you are tested, the Lord still provides. Jesus lives to provide with you what you need when you are faced with life's test, whatever it might be. How do I know that? That's his promise. Philippians 4.19, it's a precious verse. Paul says, and my God will provide for all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. You see what God promised? He'll provide for all your needs, especially when you face life tests, whatever that might be for you. Here's his promise. God will provide for all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. You see where God guides, God provides. Right? Where God guides, God will provide. Just ask Abraham. Amen? And may the peace of God that does transcend all understanding continually guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? We now have the privilege of worshiping our God. Uh, by bringing before him the gifts and offerings that we have as tokens of the sacrifice of our lives to him.
Together in prayer, we entrust our lives to the grace of our Lord Jesus, to the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, on the mountain it will be provided. We see the lesson learned by Abraham, that you are the God that provides and tests. We are bold to pray to you, God, that in all testings that we might face, that you would grant us patient endurance that produces a godly character, and that that godly character produces faith and a hope that you promise will not disappoint. So by your Spirit, equip us, Lord, to face the test that we have in front of us, trusting that you, in whatever our needs will be, will provide. Lord, in your mercy. And God, you love the world in such a way that you did give Jesus to be the sacrifice for sin, to deliver us from death, that he was willing to carry the wood of the cross and be our Savior. We confess that without that love, we would be lost, and so we are grateful and praising you and thanking you for it. Lord, in your mercy. God, be with those who are sick and suffering, who carry heavy burdens in life, for the ill, the depressed, and lonely, from all those who are torn in conflicts and read in personal relationships, for those who are victimized by war and injustice, for all who face the terrors of life with a heavy heart, grant them peace, God. In your mercy, be their guardian and their friend, and Jesus, be their comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, into whose keeping we commit all of those who we love who have gone before us. Help us to look to you in times of grief and sorrow, that we can remember that great cloud of witnesses with which you are, which we are always surrounded. And God grant that one day we would share in the joys of those who now rest in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray that you be with our land, we thank you for it, it's a good gift. And we pray that you would help us to be a united people, though we come from many different places. Fill us, Lord, with your love, with your grace, so that we can share that with others. Grant us, Lord, truthful education, honest industry, and good government, that we can lead peaceful, quiet lives in service to you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Lord Jesus, we do commend ourselves then and all for whom we pray, as we trust in the mercy of Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us now in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Now may the peace, the God of peace, who through the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may be with us, us, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.